Hey y'all, this is Moni. And this is Kat. Hey Kat. And, and this, this is, is the, the Fake Ass, ass Book Club. <laughs> Wait, can we both say or no? Hello, this is Kat. This week's episode is going to be a little bit different because me and Moni decided to take a week off for summer vacation, but we thought you still deserve some fresh content. So this is going to be an episode we usually put on Patreon. It's bonus footage. It's bonus content from our... It's bonus content from a review of Erasure by Percival Everett. But we end up talking about everything from Tyra Banks to The Last Dragon. We really go all over the place and you get to see a little bit of what it's like to, and you get to see what our patron episodes are like. So if you like it, please go over to well, Patreon get into that, and though, subscribe. Was, uh, Enjoy. Guess what my husband made me watch earlier today? It As wasn't Dumb and Dumber. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I like Dumb and Dumber. It just got awkward with Let the kids. Let me see if I can actually guess. Like, oh my God. How yeah. would that be? Please. Oh, that would be so good if you can guess it. Life. Good guess. Thank you. No, it was... Um, Classic. Would you like to guess again? I'm actually trying to think. It's like, what have I been trying to get Eden to watch? I actually wanted to watch Bottoms. I doubt that'd be something he'd bring up. Wow. It's what the is that? chick from the black chick who won all those uh, Emmys for the bear. Oh, she's so cute. She is. I love and her. And she hosted her SNL. Name's she did a really a. good. She did. It's a Nigerian name, and I don't want to get she's it wrong. She's so cute. But yes, yeah, she's super cute. She did a movie called Bottoms. It's like a high school movie, but like they're both like uh, her and like this white girl are kind of like the outcasts, and they're um, queer, I think. Um, so I don't know. It, I heard it was really funny and I wanted to check it out, but um, I'm taking that's not the film he had you watch. No. Okay, I give up guessing. Um, it was um, The Last Dragon, in fact. Mm. <laughs> and see, I thought that was too obvious. That's so funny because it's like, no, it was exactly that. Friend. So is that why you have that glow? I got that the glow. And he's like, babe, come go miss it. Because I was trying to like cook dinner. I'm like, I, is he, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I was like, I don't remember it like he remembers it. He's right. like, I've seen this a million times. He knows every beat, every song, you know. Like how a lot of people know Coming to America. Exactly. And stuff like that. Exactly. Yeah. And so, or the color purple. For him, he wanted to reshare that joy with me, which I mean, I remember enjoying the movie and liking it. You know what I'm saying? Like at the time, but. I didn't see it until, oh, I didn't see it until adulthood. So, oh, so then it was real crazy for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, what were you? I, I really couldn't what get into you watch it. it. <laughs> I mean, it's part of the culture. Okay, I didn't know if it was like, oh, such and such was like, you can't, you have to watch yeah, this because. Uh, like, no, at a certain you point, see? you got to go back and watch the classics. Okay. Um, To me, what was kind of striking was just now how much, is Leroy? Bruce Leroy. Bruce Leroy. It's just how obvious that, like how gay that actor was, like when he was kissing Vanity. Like, he was not into it at all. <laughs> like, their little makeout scene. It was bad. Um, so you he's, don't think it just highlighted his awkwardness in the film? He's for dudes. But no, it's what, still what fun. What happened to him? Um, I was asking my husband, have we seen that man in anything? Because he was a very, I don't know. Um, he probably went on to have a really good, like, choreography career or something like that. Ooh, like, wow. fight choreography. Because somebody's got to do that. Yeah, he was buff, too. He was a he, he was, was quite cute. fit. Um, um, and it makes me think about the book, too, about Bill and how he had to be closeted for so long. That's why I said. It is. I'm mad that you went And the fact that he's that just... <laughs> he said he's but gay. I mean, you just went and claimed that for that man. Yeah, it's crazy. like a lot of actors are, and it's fine, okay. but... Whoa. What happened? What, this ad? Oh, that was an ad. I thought that was him. That's him right there. But I thought that other guy, the larger gentleman, was him as well. No. Okay. That was a large white man. Oh, was it? I thought it was just a pale or just a light skinned him. Well, that's basically. Him. Okay. Huh. That's him. Okay. His name is Tymac. Okay. Hmm. Okay. And then Where's what did his... he get into? I don't IMDb. know. This is IMDb. He's supposed this to give it. me what he did. He was born on June 27th. I'll tell you that. Cool. cool. In Los Angeles. He's an actor known for. Let's see. Let's, let's 
see if we know anything else. He's an actor known for and Last Dragon. Repeat Dragon. Offenders. Dreamers. 1999 Repeat Offenders. And I don't know, Jameis Jim- Vu. I don't know what the hell that is. Probably saying that wrong. Oh, but he did work room. as a mar- martial arts trainer to the stars. So kind of. Including Madonna. Yeah, so I was almost right. Lobbied hard for a role of Scotty Appleton in New Jack City, 1991. <gasps> but the role was given to Ice-T instead. Aww. He would have. He tried. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't have. Well, no, he could be a narc. Like, that was he Ice-T's. Fine, yeah, yeah, he was a narcotics detective. Dang, that's crazy. Okay. Well, good I for you, sir. Yeah. So it looks like he stayed off drugs, and that's what's yeah. important. Because yeah, that's hard crazy. to do in Hollywood or in regular life. I mean, is this picture... Like, does he still have the Bruce Leroy Wait, outfit Are you sure on? that's not him? No. Okay. <laughs> no, that's not him. <laughs> are you? Hell no, that ain't him. Stop <laughs> doing it. That's so mean. That is not him. <laughs> no. Things it's happen. It's tail of Timmy Two Chins. You want it to be him. But it's, it's next it's to him. Ad. Like, how do you? It might be. It's not him. Okay. I'm telling you. All right. It's a chubby white man. White man. His hair look kind of fuzzy though. Okay, they're allowed to have fuzzy hair too. No, we're all they allowed, hate that. You we're know? all allowed to have fuzzy hair. See, look. Okay, okay, but I mean, like sometimes people do that. Though, remember when Tyra put on that fat suit? You remember that? Why would you? It was so hard for her. Remember how hard she cried? Ew, she cried. Yes. What a she was like, ass. it was almost like people didn't even want to look at me or like see me or talk. To- it was pretty great. I'm sorry. I love Tyra so hard. Like that. Sh- it wasn't right. You. It's like <sighs> looking back at her is a lot different than how I felt when at I first time. took in. Like especially America's Next Top Model. Um, I did watch her sh- her show some too, but by then I kind of like. I mean, she's cool, but Tyra just feels out I, of touch. Obviously, I feel oh, obviously she's in hot girl I mean, world. Let's, for her whole life. Yeah. Well, except for the, you know, she's... Yeah, like she's awkward she's a bit of a tall. swan Yeah, now. she turned into one, yeah. Oh, speaking of which, freaking obsessed with the Truman Capote. I told you about that, right? I actually saw that and Did watched you? the little trailer, I think, or something for it. I said, oh, this I'm is messy I'm loving for it. It's sure. up to us. Uh, it's so freaking messy. Messy for um, sure. But yeah, um, Truman Capote in his feud with the swans. It's like, don't take on them rich mm-hmm. uh, women if, if you want. Play if you want to. Yeah, I wouldn't have tried it. I That's just have. so But he had a up. lot of substance abuse issues, too. Mm-hmm. And just, like I said, that imposter syndrome is is something else. Man. But, yeah, I always felt very grateful to Tyra for, because um, I remember when I was working at Victoria's Secret, mm-hmm. and they were selling her book, because at the time she was one of the Victoria's Secret angels. So she she's always, she, listen, she doesn't miss out on a check. So she parlayed a deal <laughs> where her true. books would be sold at Victoria's Secret. But as an employee, I got a free copy. Was it good? It was. Like, she had a lot of really good beauty tips that I still use to this day. Such as? Um, always take your makeup off. Okay. Um, Unless you paid a lot of money for it and it still looks really good. And then the next you day. And then sleep on your back. And then you, you read it as well. It. I've just heard her say that before. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. That was in the book. Okay. Because she was like, it's very expensive to get your makeup done. Yeah. So And if you yeah, got a busy weekend. She didn't grow up rich. Yeah, yeah, I mean, she wasn't poor, but it's like she didn't have like opulent wealth growing up. Mm-hmm. So that was relatable. Mm-hmm. And then also like your daytime and your nighttime look should be different for your makeup. Like in the daytime, you should probably keep it really light with just like a mascara and like a light lip. And then save the more dramatic looks for in the evening. Mm. And she also like published a picture like side by side of her with no makeup, no touch ups, and then her with the full makeup and like the photoshopping the and everything. And, and seeing those side by side, I was like, I'm okay. See, that is nice that mm-hmm. she did that. Okay. Yeah, because it it was brave. I wouldn't have. Cause she's yeah, because she's got, like, the dark circles under her eyes. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's a real person. Of course, this was when she was in her 20s. Yeah. You know what was I mean? She at the time? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. like in the 1900s. This was the 1900s. Oh, okay. So, yeah, in the 1900s, she was still in her 20s. Okay. So, yeah. How old is she now? She is. I know, I guess we could, I could go. I know that. Janet I Jackson's, like, or no, Lisa Bonet's 56. Because I looked up how, because Jason Momoa's our age. Tyra Bank. 50, <laughs> right at 50. Go ahead. What? I put Tyra Bank, but it's still knew what I meant. 
Tyra Bank. How old is Tyra Bank? I was just about how bad I am at Googling stuff. It's like I'm your age. Google's Shelly. like our standards. It's like so we, what you we know what you meant, girl. Yeah, we be yeah. listening to you all the time. Yeah. Oh, look at Tyra. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, cheers to Tyra. Yeah. Um, but she's like a big I said, forehead like, queen too. I probably wouldn't exactly a proud forehead queen. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I don't imagine I would be much different if I had her experiences. Like, it's like, oh, I'm just gorgeous and have huge titties and really tall. <laughs> it's like, oh, lucky you. <laughs> she does have huge boobs. Yeah. She I forgot does. About that. I and forgot like about a that. tiny, and it's natural. Oh, remember she had the ultrasound on her titties uh, on her show to prove that they, there were no implants? I be remembering. Like, no, but that sounds wild. <laughs> Yeah, she actually on. She's the like, sh- get them out here, okay? Because she, she was like, I'm sick of people, and I would feel the same way if I had a. But I'm not ultrasound of my titties on TV. Y'all can suck a dick. I, I mean, they're gonna. They, I mean, for, they, I mean, like you can think that they're fake. So <laughs> like, I don't that's care. That's what it takes for them to shut up. Just go put that, one in your mouth. That helps. <laughs> when you got a dick in your mouth, it's hard you can to speak. mumble. So I'm just saying I recommend yeah. that. But anyway, good for her. For, yeah. You know. But anyway, that was all to say that she wore that fat suit. So <laughs> you reminded me again. It was like I never heard. This it. was a yeah. This is all a tangent for me talking about her being in that fat suit. Tyra had some iconic moments on that show. She Tyra. really did whatever she wanted to. Oh, the I really scene. enjoyed that show. She's five, like when she seven, had her okay. talk show and stuff like that. She's five seven. How I she? just feel like in real life she'd get on my nerves though. I don't of know course. why. Once again, because she doesn't have to. She, like I said, she seems nice enough, but yeah, she seems nice. I just feel she's like lived she could, a life where people annoying. have always been kind of like catering to her. So mm. I, this is the thing I thought was real wild. Mm. I was like, it must have been an inside joke. I hope because like <laughs> I think when Miley Cyrus turned seventeen, because they were in a movie or something together, mm. and she gave Miley Cyrus like a framed picture of herself, that Tyra Banks, when she like was she seventeen years old, because Miley was turning seventeen at the time. It's like, what the hell? <laughs> like exactly. You know what it like, makes no, me think of though a <laughs> no, little bit because she's a little bit kind of like a pageant queen a little bit. Because remember oh in God. the Tucker Max book that white man where he was talking about Miss Vermont like sent one of his friends like an autographed copy of her headshot. Oh my God. Yeah, it's just wait. Right. I mean, as it's a, just like, a term you of you know like just a Cause like just here's a token of this. my affection. It's a picture of me. <laughs> Like it almost seems it's it's unreal, and just it's a little much. Yeah, so I just I picture her being because it's way weird. To, it's like not it. like I've ever given pic- people pictures of me, but it would have been like my class picture. I would have to know they already wanted it, or <laughs> it'd be a picture of me and the other person together in a moment that we sense. shared. You've done that before. Yes, I do. Never ever just given me a picture of you because you're not my grandmother you're, you're older than me so it'd be weird if every year on my birthday you just like here's a picture of me when i was your age <laughs> enjoy it now i have a whole book now i actually it's would like, enjoy that, that if that was a gift from my grandmother exactly when it's a generational thought yeah gift. that'd be kind of cool not just but just like thank you celebrity yeah, we worked on the project. It's like, you know what? I was really thinking you're turning 17. And like, what does a 17-year-old girl need more than a picture of me? At 17. At 17. God I, love just, her. I just, yeah. Yeah, so. but I think I think Tyra has ultimately been more of a force for good than evil. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. you know, she's there's nothing wrong with Tyra. She's fine. I mm-hmm. just think she would get on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get on my own nerves, for the record. Well, I'll, I'll say this. She does have a bit of a bimbo energy, mm-hmm. and you don't really seem to necessarily cotton to bimbos. No, and I mean, I and at the same time, I could be one sometimes. So, not we like I can be absent minded. I can but be this, a little. It's like, bimboism is her habit. But, yeah. Like, because we all fall into bimbo. I mean, I literally fall down sometimes. Mm. Talk about bimbo. Mm. It's like, I hate to but, see too. <laughs> but actually, it's. But if you don't hurt yourself, it's a little It's funny. pretty funny. Yeah. But I'm usually able to rally rally and have some coherent thoughts as well. Yeah. So I try to rally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what it comes down to. I really wish that I could have been with you going back to The Last Dragon. I really wish that I could have watched you watching that. I wish we could have been together. Oh, you know what? We can have, because I, I was laughing I, so Quite honestly, hard. I forget everything that happens except that kiss. <laughs> 
Oh, I, I always forget everything except for the end where it's like, uh, who's the master? And he was like putting his head in that thing of water mm -hmm. and he came back up. Yeah, I, and, and I only know that because when I was trying to edit the episode we did with the Drunken Nights and I mm, pulled the clip. Sure so did. that was my first time seeing it in like decades. Listen. <laughs> so I, I could use, I, I would have fresh eyes on it for sure. Man, that is Excuse crazy. me. Mm. Oh, he wrote, a, he wrote a bunch of stuff. Who? Percival. Oh. Percival Everett. I'm, I'm to, First of all, so, because I read this book before we even talked about reading it on the show and all of that. And so it's been weeks and weeks. And now I'm like, what did happen at the end of it? Because I saw the mm. movie after and I remember the movie had a bunch of alternate endings. Oh. So I'm trying to remember, like, what was the actual ending of the book? I'm pretty sure he was. I know he went. He kind of like ended up kind of disappearing, which he already kind of did in his real life anyway. He was already sort of reclusive, if you will. Mm -hmm. Um but it almost seemed like maybe he was talking from a point where he was not losing his mind exactly, mm. but like he was kind of like, how did we get here? Like, I felt like that was the question he was asking himself. Like maybe he was. Because even the tone of the, wait, let's save this for the episode. This gets to. Yeah. But I just, I'm just trying to remember that so I can. Oh, was Erica was Alexander his sister? His lover. Oh, that was his love. That was his love. Oh. Tracy Ellis Ross was his sister. Oh, mm -hmm. poor Lisa. Yeah, man, Lisa. She oh, was you down hate bad. to see it. She was down bad. I though. feel like he did a good deal of foreshadowing, though. I feel like, yeah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, oof. Ending the movie is different than the book, kind of. Okay. Well, we don't have to give away the ending. Do I we? just wanted to. Oh, for yourself. <laughs> okay, he's a zany character. Okay, Percival Everett has a oh, book okay, or three now coming I out. Okay, okay, because I would, because yeah, okay, okay, now I remember. I'm like, oh, okay, all right. All right, I'm back. So okay. no, I don't have to necessarily tell you guys the end of it, but All right. I just wanted to make sure I re-remember this because Lord oh, have mercy. Oh, and, ah, oh, son of a bitch. Ah, uh, you gotta get up again. <sighs> I'm gonna have to start the record again. I didn't take a picture of my notes and my notes are on my phone. Okay. So, um, cause I was just thinking, I'm like, wait, what am I even dedicating this to? Dedicating this one to my favorite girl. You're my favorite girl. I don't remember that part. <laughs> I remember that one. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have that one recorded. Uh, okay. Hell nah, man. We recorded it off the radio on your mm -hmm. boom box. On my boom box. On the boom box. Mm -hmm. Cause I've been ripping old. media since way back. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, oh, there's a free way to get this. Let me do that. All right. All right. Oh, there we go. Okay. <sighs> my posture is so bad. I always look like all hunched over and stuff. Let me try to sit up a bit. At Have you tried getting a super uncomfortable girdle that punishes you every time you start slouching? Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I have worn um stuff like that before, but I don't make a habit of it. Um oh. so do you have any I have Okay, director. I have the movie stuff. Let me see if I have the book. All stuff. I have is just stuff about the author. Okay, cool. Well, I'll let you say that part. Let me get the little book stats real quick. I need the book yeah. stats. Yeah, Percival Everett is an American writer and distinguished professor of English at the University of Southern California. He's best known for his novels Erasure, I Am Not Sidney Portier, and The Trees, which was shortlisted for the 2022 Brooker Prize. He's also black in 50 or 67. <laughs> Not black in 67. <laughs> cool. <laughs> it doesn't say that. Like you would, because here's the thing you I know about uh, America. If you don't say okay. the race of the person, you just assume he's white. That is so funny. Except maybe with the I'm not Sidney Portier book. Man. 
But uh, yeah, he seems a little zany. There was a thing saying like he published a novel, but like simultaneously, but it was like almost three of them. Oh wait, Christopher Everett has a book or three coming out. Telephone, a novel whose multiple versions were originally intended as a secret before the coronavirus pan pandemic is the latest from rule-breaking writer. Look at him, look at him. <laughs> he's so cute. He is. He looks and like he's And I like bringing it up because I feel, I truly do feel like black men who make it past 50 are superheroes. Or actually 35. If you make it past 35, you're a superhero as a black man. If you make it past 50, you're pretty much a god. Man. Like, it is hard out here for black men. Because just in general, like, women just were just stronger. Wow, like, I'm mad that that's the... Well, just biologically. Thing that you I mean, of all the things. Right. But, I mean, you were saying that the focus was, like, that black men who survive. And then it was like, I thought you were going to go into all of the ways that are built into the system why they don't. And oh. you, were, you went into why we survive more. It's like, oh. we're just stronger. <laughs> well, I mean. fuck you guys. You just guys. physiologically, no, I know, just genetically. I know. It just funny. But yes, we're, funny. Up, we're up all against a lot. That is hilarious. Um, yeah, oh. for instance, we have to deal with them. Oh, wow. <laughs> patrons, uh, patron saints. <laughs> Just kidding. Look it's an, it. it is an honor. My goodness. Um, it is an honor. I feel like that woman in that video you made me watch. The one that got seated on? <laughs> is that what happened? I, you don't want to be watching all of them either. Because a lot of times I'll be like, no. That sounds real bad. <laughs> but the cartoon from last week, I thought no, you were talking about that. No, not the cartoon. That. I'm talking about that um, wonderful woman who was laying there talking about. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's nothing more wonderful than a, a you black know. man. Yeah. And I'm like, I mean. I think she meant it. I, I know I she meant it. They're I delicious. agree with her as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, I like Brother to the Night's response where he was like, I love this, but I don't like it. Right. <laughs> it's like, like, yeah. Well, you shouldn't. Yeah. And you're right. Uh, right. Yeah, that's super weird. But no. It's always no. that one. It's men. That's men, hilarious. This, all of them. You guys are great. Oh my gosh, that's too funny. Um, like, see. you know, five stars, no notes. <laughs> you're <Yeah>, right. <laughs> well, I mean, I've got notes. Uh, <laughs> mm hmm. Huh. I'm actually really interested in reading more of his stuff. How cute is this? Oh, okay, okay. I would probably have to read this multiple times to truly get it. Too. For real, for real. Because every time I would catch layers of stuff, I've been like, oh, I see what he did there. And I probably missed some of that shit, for sure. Because... Mm. Who's here? Oh, okay. So he he released a novel, but there's three versions of it, but they're all slightly different. And even the cover is a little bit different. It's called Telephone. That's clever. It is. I He's like a him. clever fellow, mm -hmm. is what we're learning. Absolutely. So I wonder how much of a erasure is, because it felt so real. I'm like, is this autobiographical? Especially, you know, talking about, you know, because he's writing about a writer. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure he has to be getting some stuff from his real life. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know who I enjoy that? I, I like when Tina Fey does that. When she writes stuff about writers. Well, it's an interesting thing because you don't ever really... It's always nice to get the inner workings of mm -hmm. other people's jobs sometimes. It's like, damn, I, I like know. when she admits, too, like she'll get jealous when someone gets famous off of something she wrote. I, I totally would understand that. Yeah. And when people are just like, oh, like... Um, because Neil Brennan brings this up a lot too about how he's like, yeah, a lot of these actors are dummies. Like they're mm -hmm. just not. Very, he's like, I there's so many people that I write stuff for them to like say, just like at parties, like just like giving them like little clever lines and stuff like that for just like, or if they're gonna be giving a speech at like a birthday party or something like that, like they'll pay him uh, to write some stuff out. Amen. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I mean, I think that's a good. Uh, so let's go back. Let's make sure we talk about that in the okay. episode. The idea of um, stupid being actors? jealous. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> of people getting famous off of your work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 
All right, well, so should we just jump into this? Yes, because I feel like my biggest thing is like, I just hate when I don't have my dedication ready to go, but okay. I, I know what I'm doing. All right, excellent. <laughs> <gasps> okay. Oh, <laughs> that's the one thing I did say. Imitation of life? The, well, yeah, because he mentions it real quick in mm -hmm. the where because he watches it, but um, it is fantastic. Film. I love it. Um, but when he was reading the paper at the beginning of the book at that conference, and he called space. Buddhist uh, bean gazing fat boys, because he was saying that you could see a whole I landscape in a bean. That's what I'm saying. Like it was. It was brutal. There's so much. Yeah, it was, but yeah, he, because that's when the first time you get an example of monks writing, which I get the feeling is Percival Everett's preferred writing. He, it's pretentious a little. It very, yeah. but for people who and like that, that yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, you know. We deserve to have some pretentious art, is all I'm saying, too. Everybody, Why can't we have that everybody too? deserves to eat. Yeah, so that's all I'm saying. And, uh, Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Oh, That's so what that. are we, what is next week? So next week is the Super Bowl. We can talk about, let's see, next or week. Or no, not next week is Super Bowl. Next week is, oh, that's going to be All-Star. Yeah, but will we have experienced All-Star? No. Will leading up to? No. Um, but it'll be, be released after All-Star. Whatever we record yeah. next week. Well, okay. Because I, I figure maybe we record again on Saturday since we'll be at Butter that day. Or not Butter, your grandma's thing. Or not the alumni thing. The HBCU thing. I thought your grandma sent you the link for that. I'm sorry. Roberta, Roberta my bad. No, I, it's late and I've been drinking. Well, and my grandma gave you the tickets to the movie. That's thing true. And all She's on my heart. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> She's on my heart. So yeah, um, the yeah, because the, the, uh, we're on the tenth, so the seventeenth will be that Saturday. Of oh, okay, so we can just talk about our weekend. You want it? You would be a fakester. A unless give we us a week off. With, yeah, unless we come up with something. I think we should give between. ourselves. You have a lot going on. I don't know. I have my regular shit. You're painting pictures and all this. Well, that's not this week. But don't you this, have to prep? I will Bitch, be. That's in two weeks. What are you talking but about? But I can listen to stuff while I'm prepping. Oh, okay. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not hard for me to. I usually throw something on while I'm Well, let I'm doing me know that. if something pops up that you want us to read, we can do it. But we can just say we're going to talk. We can just say we're going to have a full weekend. And so we might want to leave some space to talk about what we our shenanigans yeah. and experiences. So it'll be a surprise. Um, but it's probably good to get a couple books just to have because we still don't really have a running list like we, we did. Do. The first season, we were so good about that. We were. Um, what have I been? Okay, so I already. Oh, okay. So I think we should just announce a fake ass episode. But because yeah, if the 49ers win, then I get to choose a graphic novel. Okay, yeah, so that could be it. So, so we we'll say just that announce too. a yeah, fake Could be, yeah, yeah, okay. And then whatever torture you come up for me okay oh right. oh and then yeah maybe i'll shout out v's thing i don't know is my lipstick still on yeah is mine yeah actually let me make sure things it looks good oh that's what a good listen <laughs> i know but then it's like i gotta get up <laughs> damn damn gina my favorite eating pizza at home yeah <laughs> i made some today with because like the rollout crust and stuff of course my, you did someone was like is this is this homemade mom i'm like if you crust that came out of a biscuit can if that's considered yes. homemade that's I guess. more homemade than my pizza was i yeah. went to just winging it well i didn't i didn't and have that money i already pizza. paid for the crust and stuff it was already here <laughs> you know what i'm saying so, I didn't want to exactly, but it was um, it was too much cheese. Like the cheese to sauce ratio was Damn. a little off, but it was still good. You know what I mean? It was good <sighs> cheese and good sauce. It had to be. I just needed to. I needed to get it one time so I knew how to order it. Okay, so light you can cheese. tell. So next time I'm telling them light cheese, extra sauce, and mm. then it'll be it'll be real good. Really? Because when you couldn't have just said extra sauce, it still would have been too much cheese. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 
Because it'd be hard for me to have too much cheese, but I have had a piece of that. Yeah. Oddly enough, I didn't think that there was a point that I could reach where there's too much cheese. Oh, I did. You know me with cream. Yeah, you know, because so me, I'm like, yeah. please, I want to be smothered <laughs> with cream. Uh, it's my favorite. <laughs> no, not that kind. That's I just came from an amorous art show. I'm sorry. Amorous. Yeah. I have to Google that. Shh, don't tell me. I want to learn. I was just going to say, like. Mm -hmm. Talk about you look creamy yeah, your face. Was, I know, I know. I really don't though. I don't it's even like, like such phrasing. Ugh, damn mm. it. Mm. Amorous, I'm probably spelling that wrong. It's A M O R O U S. Oh man, I missed a whole bunch of vowels. <laughs> <laughs> I threw an I in that bitch. <laughs> the worst showing feeling or relating to sexual desire mm. oh i didn't know that the whole thing was like that yes see that okay now that makes sense now why you didn't get why the fondle booth I'm was like, so strange to yeah, you I'm like, you were in an art show people were just getting like that's weird but i that's guess why, that was the whole point yeah yeah that's why the naked lady pictures really worked for this show oh my goodness and actually i'm really glad because mine that's were fine. like probably the most like bright mm. yeah I like it. Yeah, it was pretty great. Huh. See, I learned a whole bunch of new words so this week. This is great. Amorous. Books. Yeah, man. Showing feeling related to sexual desires. Can I remember that? Yes, I can. Okay. Amorous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We I remember that one. There was another word, too, because I think I highlighted him on this. Well, like, he oh. was using some. He, I'm just saying. Yeah, he was like, throwing some big boys and, out and there. And that's what made me feel sorry for people who, mm. you know, because I'm on the edge. Like, I think that, I mean, one step backward or forward, I could either probably really, you know what I'm saying? Like, Live it either one. But I really want to, you know, like, I want to have an elevated experience sometimes, though. Like, so I want well, to be able to. See that stuff. Yeah, I think but I don't always have to have it. Yeah, it, it, it I love a nice fashion. High low. That's the best fashion. It's the best. And that's, I feel like maybe with art, it's the same. I, well, fashion is art. That, thank you. It is. <laughs> oh my gosh. Too bad fashion that's not like. Is, every type of art, uh, it usually is better when there's a combination of high and low. Yeah. But what it comes down to is quality. Yeah. Like, that's the thing. Like, because it's the same thing too, where it's like, yeah, you go to a, like a, four Michelin star restaurant, but sometimes you just want red tips. And, and that's period. what's slapping. You or know what I'm saying? Wine. Where it's just like, cause like <laughs> that, that's always a trope too in a lot of shows where you take like the yokels, just like, well, when are they going to bring the food out? What's this little teeny yeah. tiny yeah. one? It's like, <laughs> like, well, sir, that is a mise en soie poached in a box of ginger. Not a <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, Not well, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, well, if you just get me a cheeseburger, I'd be a lot happier. I tell you what. Oh, some chicken fingers. But, and, but not for nothing, cheeseburgers are delectable. They're good as hell. <laughs> like, I'm just, you know, so. And and then it's like, well, what kind of cheeseburger are we talking about here? You know, then there's a variety because, of cheeseburgers. Because so. you'll get, like, fancy pants, like culinary people who will tell you why McDonald's fries are actually quite amazing. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, what they do, what it takes to make that happen. Is the reason why home, <laughs> at home cooks can't do it. Yeah. Like as much shit we talk about McDonald's, I can't make my fries taste like that. Nah, but my wife fries be good though. Yes, that's true. Might go hold you up. True. But it is. I mean, the it's different. You know, like the integrity the of each feel. one. It's it's and it's the consistency, consistency of yeah. every fry. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't say that my fries are all gonna be the, the thing. exact same. My cooking's They're decent. Not. It is not consistent. Like, that's the no, thing. No, some like, of my stuff isn't either, no. Because a sure. lot of times I'm not using recipes. I'm just, like, Most, going with my nine feelings. Nine times out of ten. <laughs> yeah, I'm not using recipes. Or even if I'm starting with one, it's just a suggestion for what yeah. I should be doing. So, yeah. uh, that was good. Um, All right, yeah, so. I think we should just shout out our um the crap we're doing for All Stars. So, let's rate the book. I can't. I didn't finish it. I'm going to rate the book. Okay. Um, And then... I want you to tell me who would like this book. Okay. After that, and then we can spend the wheel and all that. Okay. And talk about our weekend stuff. Before we go, we must give thanks Thank to you. Urban Nerd for providing our music. And legal services were handled by Trazen A. M. Atkins. If you like what you heard, please feel free to join us every Wednesday for another fake ass book club. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you guys for listening. You can check us out at thefabpodcast.com. Please subscribe, rate, and review our podcast wherever you're listening right now. We want to hear from you. Come put it in our life. Thanks again. And until next time, peace, love, and the Fake Ass Book Club. We out. <laughs>